Okay, what's going on everybody? This is John again from AdSense Flippers, and this is the final video in our guide. So you made it all the way through. We're going to kind of wrap this thing up and show you how you can outsource some of this process to a team of agents. Uh, whether you want to do it with just one person or you know eight people, that's up to you. How far you want to scale this thing, we're going to kind of give you a rough process on how to do that. But before we get into that, let's go over some of the tools you're going to need in order to get that done. So let's... the first tool that you're going to need is called Hive Desk. Now this is what we use to track all of our employees' hours and their work. So this is a program they install on their computer, and then every time they sit down to work, they log into Hive Desk. It takes screenshots of their progress, and we can go through and look at those, make sure they're staying on task, and then they get paid based on how many hours they're logged into Hive Desk active and working on our stuff. Next thing you need is going to be Skype. So Skype we use to keep in contact with all of our employees. Different teams we're working on different projects all are grouped together so when they finish one task they can update the whole team so that the next person knows to pick up where the former individual left off. It's also a really good way to just stay in touch with your employees. In the Philippines internet can be a little sketchy. We can't always video chat with everybody but we can almost always you know, instant message back and forth if we need to get a hold of someone. Next is Dropbox. Uh, you'll probably fill up the free account pretty quickly so we recommend you go ahead and just purchase it. This is where we store all of our content uh, as well as any other files that we might need for the process uh, like a website header images or things like that. That way it's accessible to everyone. And then lastly the uh, essential piece of software here is Google Documents. So all our spreadsheets are stored in Google Docs and shared with our employees so everyone has access to them and can update them as they get their work done. Uh, definitely a pivotal part of the whole system. Alright, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the different spreadsheets that we use to keep track of this entire process. So basically all of our spreadsheets are stored in a Gmail account and all of our employees have their own Gmail accounts and our spreadsheets are shared with them so they can access them and make changes and updates as they do their work. So let's go over the essential ones that you'll need here that will also include in the guide to kind of give you like a, a little overview here. This first one is called the task overview spreadsheet and this is just like a 30,000 foot view of where each site is. So once a site gets registered and the domain is purchased We'll go ahead and enter the domain in here, the day it was purchased in here, the day it was researched here, the day it was purchased here. Uh, and then you can kind of go through this whole thing and see where a site is. is. Has the hosting been set up yet? Has WordPress been installed yet? Has secondary keyword research been done? Has primary content been written and edited? Has secondary content been written and edited? You know, and so on and so forth, all the way over to link building. So basically from start to finish, you can see where a site is at within this document. And this is where your different agents are going to go to see what they have to do for the day. They'll log in here and they'll see, uh, let's say my job is primary to order primary content and then edit it. I can log in here and see which websites don't yet have primary content ordered and then I can go ahead and make sure to get that done. Alright, so let's move on to the contractor tracking. Alright, so when you order content from people, sometimes we like to take someone and if we found they were good, we'll, we'll move outside of the, a system like Fiverr or iWriter and we'll just work with them directly or maybe we found someone on Elance or something. This allows us to track how many orders we have out with them, uh, what type of order it was, whether it was primary content or secondary content, who the contractor is, their email address, which is of course linked to their PayPal account, how much we owe them and whether or not they need to be paid. So when content gets delivered and edited, our content editor will Skype either Joe or Justin and say, hey, this individual needs to be paid, then we can log in and we can get that done. This tracks that whole process. All right, this is the secondary keyword research spreadsheet. So once a domain has been purchased, it gets put in this spreadsheet along with the keyword, the primary keyword, and then the secondary keyword researcher needs to go in and find some long tails for the primary keyword and then research the other secondaries for the rest of the content that needs to be written. And this is where we track all of that. This is the login info spreadsheet where 
once WordPress gets set up, our site setup guy will go in and he will put the actual login name, password, and analytics code, all that stuff in the spreadsheet so that if we need to log into these sites later on, we have that information. All right, and this is the content spreadsheet, which shows all of our sites. It shows what the primary keyword is, what the titles of all the primary and secondary content are, and those are also the corresponding names in the Dropbox folder uh, where our site setup guy can go in and pull those and post them online. All right, so let's do like a quick kind of run through so you can get a general idea of how these spreadsheets kind of work together. So let's pretend for the moment that we have three agents. Now the first person who's going to need to do something on this in this whole process is going to be the site setup individual. So let's say I purchased a domain called um, blueshorts.com, okay? And then I put in the date it was researched, the day it was purchased, and now Every day, my site setup guy is going to log into the spreadsheet and see, oh, here's an empty site, and the hosting has not been set up yet. Neither has WordPress. So he's going to go in and get those two things done. Now, we went over some videos earlier on how to do all that, so we're not going to address that now. So let's say he's gone through and he's finished those tasks. So he'll put in the dates that those were completed. I'll make this the same day. Not that it matters. Okay, so now every day our keyword researcher will log in here and see, oh, okay, I have some secondary keywords to find. This site is now live and online, but there's, there's no content. So I need to do some research to make sure that we can get some content written for this website. So they'll go ahead and look up this site. In the secondary keyword research portion blueshorts.com now we already know what the primary keyword is which goes over here blue shorts so now our keyword researcher will go ahead and fill in the long tails for blue shorts and then also they will do all the secondaries which we covered in the guide and they'll find the long tails that are needed for those as well and put those into these columns. Once that's all done, they'll log into Skype and they will update the team that the, long, that the secondary keyword research is done for blueshorts.com. And now our content editor will know that they need to order some content for this website. So they'll go ahead, log into here, and they already know how to structure this so that uh, you know what titles to use and how to select which articles need to be written and what long tails and what keywords need to be put into the article. Again, that's stuff that we already went over in the guide. So once the content comes back from whoever they ordered it from, they're going to log, our content uh, individual will log into this spreadsheet, put in blueshorts.com. Okay, and let's say they've got all the content back. So they can put in the primary title here, blue, blue shorts. They can put in their name, Steve. And then they'll put in the rest of the titles for all the secondary content as well. And then they'll upload each of these files to Dropbox in a, in a folder specifically called blue shorts. And then they'll go into Skype and they'll notify the team that the content is finished. So once the content editor has got all this content back, uploaded it to Dropbox, they can go back to the task overview and put in the dates that all of this was completed. All right. So now our content's been written. So our content editor will now notify the team on Skype that the content has been written and it's ready to go online. So if I'm the guy who does the job of putting the content into WordPress, I can log in here and see, oh, all, all, all the content is done. It's been done on these dates, which means it's in Dropbox. I can log into the content folder or the content spreadsheet here and see that 
here are all the names of the different files that I need to research and I need to go into Dropbox and copy those onto my computer and now I'm going to put those online and once I've done that with WordPress which we talked about in an earlier video now I can put the date that that was done okay and let's say I did the secondary and the primary content on the same day so now the link builder can log into the sheet like everyone does every day and now he can see that this site still needs link build so we can see the only where still needs to be done submit your article still needs to be done and do follow blog still need to be commented and linked back so that's just a general process for how all of this works and how you can kind of put it all together you know none of this is written in stone you can adjust these spreadsheets to suit your own needs uh, you can use more of them you can use less of them uh, to be honest with you, this just gets we get more and more spreadsheets as we go, as we get more more individuals on the team, and we have more uh, you know metrics that we want to track. It gets more and more complicated. So eventually, we're looking to move to some sort of CRM software, so the data just gets entered and can be searched and indexed and pulled up more easily. Uh, that'll be a lot faster. Things get pretty cumbersome doing it all in Google Documents. But especially starting out, uh, it's free. It's an easy way to manage your team and keep track of everything. Again, we just recommend you start with as few agents as possible. Make sure they understand the process. And uh, make sure you understand the process and everything's getting tracked well. And uh, then slowly build on top of that, in introducing more spreadsheets, uh, you know, more processes, and getting yourself to do less of the busy work and more of the stuff that's important. So that's about it. Good luck.